Hello, welcome to a new Google Sheets video in Practical Sheets. Today we're starting the complete course on the function query. This awesome function exclusive to Google Sheets that we'll learn to master in the following lessons. Today we're going to see the basic structure of query. What does it do? In what cases would it be helpful? And we'll see the first command that is select. We're going to see the three arguments that make the query function and we're going to focus on the select command. Hope you like it and I hope you consider subscribing to the channel and furthermore supporting me in the Patreon page of Practical Sheets. Thank you so much and let's go on with the lesson. So let's start this lesson number one in telling you what is query and showing you the basic composition of query. So query is a very, very flexible function, very complex function that can do a lot of things. Basically, it can do dynamic copies of your databases, of your worksheets, of your spreadsheets. And by what I mean by dynamic is that given that it's a formula, then every time you update any data on any of these rows or columns, or you add a new column or you add a new row, automatically it will bring this new data. So given that it's a formula and it's updating all the time, it will be an exact copy of your table. This is on a basic level. But other than that, we could filter as we would do in a in a in a basic filter where you can do all uh, the numbers below 10 or greater than 10 or the names that only the name Sander or only the last names McGill or only the names that start with the letter A or dates that are seven, July 6th or uh, that the amount is between four and ten or we can go f with with much more complex formulas for example that the name starts with a with a v or that the date is between six and eight or that it's only june or that it's only one trimester or that it's only a specific year we can have much more complex formulas than that not only that we could also filter the columns this is really nice we could, for example, I don't need the last name or don't need the email or don't need the country for now. So I can bring a copy that only has the, and maybe the ID, I also don't need it. So I will just have the first name and the date and the amount, and that's it. Or I could reorder it. First the amount, then the first name, then the product. Or first the product, then the amount, then the first name. Things like that. And then you can order it by any of the columns, then you can limit that we, I only need the first five data or the first 10 rows. And there are many, many possibilities. So there are a lot of things we can do. We can mix it with array formulas, with, with other queries, we could do sub queries. And last, but definitely not least, we can also summarize as in a pivot table. So we could add up, do average, the maximum, the minimum of several values as we would do in a pivot table. This is why I'm telling you that this is an experiment that may last. I don't know if it's going to backfire because this may last a lot of lessons. My objective is to do the most complete free query course online. How is that for ambitious? So then I may do some paid courses, hopefully, but for this to happen, I need to have this really cool course work and that it's useful for you. So no more talking. Let's do some queries again. Please correct me. It's queries or queries. So let's go at the basic use of query function. I'm telling you that this is very flexible, starting in the fact that query has three arguments, but I could actually use only one or only two. So let's start with only one argument. The basic argument I need for query is a database, a table. So I'm going to choose this table from i let's start here in a1 and let's go control shift right to my last column that is i and then let's go control shift down to my last row that is a thousand and one if i hit enter sheet automatically closes my parentheses and what it's going to happen is that if this is just an exact dynamic copy of my other table. If I go here and change this name instead of Virginie for Virginia, 
automatically here I reflect all my changes. So this is the first thing. Query is one uh, is a kind of function called matrix function or array function. What this means is that as you could see, I just wrote the function in the cell A1. However, once I clicked enter, it spread until my I column and until my thousand row. So this is what an array formula or a matrix type formula does. Only writing it in the first cell, it will expand to many other cells, the ones depending on the function. In this case, it will start where I wrote my cell that coincidentally is the same A1, and it will go up to a thousand rows down and 11 or 12 columns to the right. Again, in this case, it's the same A1 to a, well, I1001, but if I started, if I insert one column to the left, then it won't start in A1, but in B1. And if I insert a row above, then it won't start in A1, but in B2, and it go, won't go until I1001, but until J1002. Okay? Let's bring it back to our A1. So this is the first main characteristics of query I wanted you to know. First, that it is a matrix function and that it, it brings dynamically all the data of the range I give it. And secondly, it is a matrix function or an array formula function, an array type function. It means that it expands automatically up until I tell it to. These array type formulas have one difficulty is that if I write something here, then I will have an error. And the error is that array result was not expanded because it would overwrite data in C3. So if I don't understand or I don't know that this is a, an array formula or, a, or an array function, and I write something where some of the data of this array function should have been, then I'm, I'm truncating it, I'm blocking it. So if I delete it, then everything works good. So be very careful with this. That's it. And the other thing, the other difficulty with query that we may look in some in more advanced lessons is that it's not a double, a double way communication. It just reads. If I try to write something here, I say, okay, I don't, I prefer this to be, actually, this is not 2021, 2022. Then again, I'm breaking the formula because this is just a reading formula. It's not a reading and writing formula. This is not an app script. Maybe in the future, we could do a video where I try to do a double way communication with app script. But for now, this is just one way communication. This is my source. So let's call this actually source. And this is my report or whatever. Okay. So now uh, we understand the first argument of query that is the data. It could be formula, an input range, a formula where I do some other calculations, it could be a named range or much more. Okay. So this is my first part, the data. The second one and the most interesting one is the query the what I'm going to do with this data. If you are familiar or have worked in the past with the programming language SQL, then you will find this a bit familiar. And if you've never done it, uh, you just have experience with Excel or sheets, then you'll find this like another language because it's so different than the normal formula language. So it, was, it takes a bit to get used to, but once you start using it, you'll understand its logic. Okay. So second argument, I'll put a comma here. And for now we can have just double quotation marks, hit enter and it's nothing just to let you know that this always has to be in quotation marks. The command or the clauses for the query are always a text string. Okay. So but let's start with select. Select will tell it which columns do I want to show. I was telling you at the beginning of the video that in query, you can filter either by rows or by column. So the most basic or the most, maybe one of the most used commands in query, it's the select command, because here you can tell it which columns you want to show and in which order. 
If you, for example, put select and this uh, asterisk and you hit enter, you don't see any change. The asterisk is like telling the query function, just show me everything. So it's the same as not having put anything. So you say, well, what's the, the function of this? The function is that when you put more commands like where, like limit, like order by, offset, whatever, then this will be uh, a quick way of saying, okay, I'm going to say to filter or to give you some other commands, but for now, just show me all the columns, okay? So this is the first use, just show all the columns, but the, the real magic happens when I tell it which columns I want to show. For example, let's say I don't want to show all these, I just want to show first name, last name, product and amount, B, C, E and F. So here I'm just going to put the letter numbers. You should put them in uppercase because this is case sensitive. Not everything in query is case sensitive, but some things like this. The columns, for example, should be in uppercase. So I'm going to say B, C, B, comma, C, comma, E, comma, F. That's it. Enter. And you see here that it's like, like if it was hiding the other columns. Actually, it is not hiding anything. It's just showing me the columns I tell him to. And the nice thing is that I could also change the order. For example, I'm going to put this F at the beginning. F, comma, and then I change the order. Okay, what I cannot do is repeat it. F and then F again. I cannot do it. What I can do, and then we will see it in advanced lessons, is I can do some things to these columns. For now, it's enough to know that I need at least one column. If I don't put anything, I'm going to have an error. I need to put at least one column and I can put the number of columns I want and in the order I want, as long as I don't repeat any columns. Okay, so this is the select clause or the select command in query. The real power of this function will be when I mix it up with the where clause, but we're going to see this in the next lesson. So here it's easy. It happened when I wrote something that it was a text. So I only need to select this column and put it in a currency format and that's it. It'll work perfect. The last thing I'm going to show you is the third argument of the query function. The third argument is called the headers and the headers may have different options. Then the main option is one, is that it has one header. If you leave it open, you see that it doesn't change. If you put minus one, this is the automatic option. Here it says in the, in the help section, it says that it will guess the header. So it's not, uh, sometimes you, you'll need to play depending on the data. Sometimes you can leave it in minus one or omit it, or just play with zero. The thing with query is that it is a text function and it tries to guess which type of data is each column. So you put it zero, it will guess, it will say that all of the, it doesn't have headers and that all of the uh, columns are numbers. And given that this is not a number, this is why it will put it as blank. So there are some, maybe not erratic, but different behaviors than that query can can do depending on these headers. So sometimes you just need to play a bit with it or start in, the, or leave the, the headers separate. But many times just leaving it without the last argument will work. Okay. Then in advanced errors and tips, we will see how we can deal with this in, in more advanced scenarios. Okay. So that's it. That's query lesson number one, the main structure of query. And we saw the first clause or command query that is the select command. Okay. So I hope you like it. I hope this is practical and remains close to the name of this channel, Practical Sheets. And as always, you can ask me anything regarding this course, hopefully while we're doing it, so we can incorporate your questions in future episodes of this hopefully very complete query course. So as always, thank you so much. And if you would like to support me, you can subscribe to the channel and hit on the notifications button so you can know where we have the second and third and all the parts of this 
query curves in the next lesson we're going to see the where function this is the where the magic starts to happen and you can support me furthermore by subscribing to the patreon page where you'll find all the templates all the formulas all the codes everything so you don't have to start from scratch in all the videos i do here in the channel again thank you so much and see you next time